In this video, let's learn about the facial vein. The facial vein is very important to know because of the presence of the dangerous area of the face. So the venous blood from the face is mainly drained by two veins. That is the facial vein and the retromandibular vein. Now firstly, let's learn about the facial vein. Let's learn how it is formed and its tributaries. The facial vein is the largest vein of the face and it is formed at the medial angle of the eye by the union of the two veins. So, it is formed by the union of supratrochlear and the supraorbital veins. So, it is formed by the union of supratrochlear and the supraorbital vein. After the formation, this facial vein runs straight downwards and backwards behind the facial artery to reach the anterior inferior angle of the masseter and here it pierces the deep fascia and after it pierces the deep fascia it comes and joins into the anterior division of the retromandibular vein so in this diagram this is the facial vein which is formed by the deep facial vein so this division is the deep facial vein here will be the angular vein in which the angle is formed by the supratrochlear vein and the supraorbital vein. We will talk about the deep facial vein in the deep connections of this facial vein. After the facial vein is formed, it passes downwards and it joins the anterior division of the retromandibular vein that is this one. This is the anterior division of the retromandibular vein and simultaneously this is the posterior division of the retromandibular vein. So after this facial vein come and joins with the anterior division of the retromandibular vein, it forms the common facial vein. So this is the common facial vein. And this common facial vein drains into the internal jugular vein. So this is the internal jugular vein. So this facial vein is the largest vein of the face. It is formed by the supratrochlear and the supraorbital veins. And after the formation, it runs straight downwards and backwards behind the facial artery which is present here. And it reaches the anterior inferior angle of the masseter muscle. And after piercing the deep fascia, it crosses superficial to the submandibular gland that means here and it joins the anterior division of the retromandibular vein and it forms the common facial vein which further drains into the internal jugular vein. So this is about the facial vein which drains the most of the blood of the face. And coming to the tributaries of the facial vein, the tributaries of the facial vein corresponds to the branches of the facial artery. Now coming to the deep connections of the facial vein, the facial vein communicates with the cavernous sinus by two routes. The first route is at the commencement of the facial vein and the second connection is in the cheek. The first connection is at the commencement of the facial vein that is at the point of the commencement. The facial vein communicates with the superior ophthalmic vein which is present backward to the orbit and it drains into the cavernous sinus. So in this diagram, this is the cavernous sinus. And this facial vein communicates with the superior ophthalmic vein and it drains into the cavernous sinus. And the second deep connection is in the cheek. The facial vein is joined into the pterygoid venous plexus, that is this one. This is the pterygoid venous plexus by the deep facial vein. So this is the deep facial vein and this facial vein is connected to the pterygoid venous plexus by the presence of deep facial vein. This deep facial vein passes backwards over the buccinator muscle which is present in the cheek and deep to the ramus of the mandible and it communicates with the pterygoid venous plexus around the lateral pterygoid muscle. So here will be the lateral pterygoid muscle and which in turn communicates with the cavernous sinus through the presence of an emissary vein. 
So this is the emissary vein. So these are the two connections of the facial vein by which it drains into the cavernous sinus. And now coming to the another vein which is the retromandibular vein. In this diagram, this is the retromandibular vein. As the name suggests, retromandibular that is behind or back to the mandible. It is formed by the union of two veins that is the superficial temporal and the maxillary vein which is present within the parotid gland. So here will be the maxillary vein which is present in the parotid gland here. So the retromandibular vein is formed by the union of here will be the superficial temporal vein and another vein it is the maxillary vein. This retromandibular vein after the formation that means here this retromandibular vein passes down to the parotid gland and it divides into two the posterior division and the anterior division. This is the anterior division. The anterior division joins the common facial vein and it forms and it drains into the internal jugular vein. Whereas the posterior division of the retromandibular vein it joins the posterior auricular vein. So this is the posterior auricular vein. Remember this as it is behind to the auricle that is the ear. So the posterior division of the retromandibular vein joins with the posterior auricular vein and it forms the external jugular vein. So this is the external jugular vein. So the retromandibular vein joins the posterior auricular vein to form the external jugular vein whereas, whereas the common facial vein with the anterior division of the retromandibular vein drains into the internal jugular vein. And coming to the most important point that is the clinical correlation which is the dangerous area of the face. So in this diagram this area is called as the dangerous area of face. So the area from the lower part of the nose, the upper lip and the adjoining part of the cheek is said as the dangerous area of the face. So let's know the reason of this. It is because the facial vein and its communications are devoid of the walls in their lumens. And since this facial vein rests onto the muscles of the mastication, it can easily spread the septic emboli from this affected area, that is the dangerous area of the face, into a retrograde direction, that is through the deep facial vein into the pterygoid venous plexus from there to the emissary vein and into the cavernous sinus. So if the septic emboli is formed in the dangerous area of the face that means at the lower border of the nose, the part of the upper lip and the adjoining cheek area, this infection can form a septic emboli which can be easily transferred into the cavernous sinus by the deep facial vein into the pterygoid plexus and through the emissary vein it can easily go into the cavernous sinus. That is because the facial vein and its communications are devoid of the valves in their lumens. This emboli reaching the cavernous sinus leads to meningitis and cavernous sinus thrombosis which are life-threatening conditions and for this reason, this area is called as the dangerous area of the face. So guys, this is all about the facial vein and the venous drainage of the face with its clinical importance, that is the dangerous area of the face. If you like this video, do subscribe to my channel.